Let's take a look inside a combined jump starter for vehicles and also a USB power bank. Uh, this one is called Streetwise. And it's notable that it says battery capacity 8000 milliamp power. And although it puts out 12 volts, the 8000 milliamp power is not at 12 volts. It does have three cells and the combined milliamp power rating is that 8000 milliamp power. It says 29.6 watt hour at 3.7 volts. Uh, that effectively at 12 volts means more like 2.6 amp hour or 2600 milliamp hour. Now I've already dissected this as you can see and whipped the circuit board out and taken some pictures of it. That should save some time. Things worthy of note. There's a charging and well, I was going to say balancing. It's just a charging port. It doesn't have balancing. But uh, it has a charging connector which has the four connections required for either end of the cell plus the intermediate tap point so it can basically monitor each cell for over voltage when it's charging or shut it off when it's uh, over discharge. But that does not apply to the output here which is very high current and it's tapped directly off the battery pack. And this is most likely one of these sort of racing -y type high current cells that instead of just a wound foil in each of the three cells in here, it's actually alternate layers of foil that uh, have a tab coming out the end and they basically have alternate layers of foil and dielectric separator, which allows it to put out lots and lots of current. It does say on the uh, cover, it says, do not disassemble, uh oh, to prevent electric shock, please read instructions before any operation. In reality, there's not really much risk of electric shock off the 12 volts, but what there is a risk of, if you start messing around with this, is a, a burn, because this thing can put out a lot of current. And also, if you puncture the cell, that's bad news. Notable, because uh, the case is very tight to this, and the little fins at the back here have kind of pressed into the end here, but it's not too bad. I don't think it's going to be quite the same as the Samsung situation where they stuffed so much uh, battery in that uh, it suffered damage in some of the phones and burst into flames. This doesn't really look like that. Um, let's take a look at the circuitry. Oh, and uh, there's two sections to this. There is the main unit, which has the output connector, which is a fairly standard battery connector. And it has the USB output and the charge control circuitry. But then you can plug this into it uh, when you want to jumpstart your car. And it is all the rest of the circuitry for dealing with the super high current stuff that goes on with the 12 volt side. So let's bring in the drawings. Tell you what, I'll just uh, clear this stuff off first and then we'll take a look at the drawings. Let's explore. So this is a very modular system. The I'm not going to draw the schematic for this because uh, this is a double sided board. It's well stuffed on both sides, so it would take a very long time to draw that out. But I can go over the, the basic building blocks that make this operate. So here's the charging port and that is has a current regulator based on this transistor, which has a level shifter from this microcontroller and an inductor. The components that get warm while this is charging are the inductor gets slightly warm, this diode gets fairly hot, uh, and this resistor. Now this resistor, I'm wondering if this is actually for current sensing, it probably is, um, or fusible resistor. I notice there's also a 0.1 ohm resistor going to the USB output, um, and that is potentially a fuse, I would think. I don't know if it's being used for current sensing, although, well, that's a separate module. I'll talk about that in a moment. Let's, let's keep it on the subject here. So microcontroller, level shifter, MOSFET, switching this inductor and uh, controlling the charge of the battery pack from this 15 volt input. On the back of the circuit board is a charge control chip in the sense, well, this is the protection chip more than anything else. Uh, this has the number SH367003X or AAFOO. I did not find that. I found a picture of it on a Russian website and that had another data sheet linked, which was for, uh, where is it? S8254A series, which appears to be the same chip. It's got the same pinout. And it has the usual arrangement. It's got the cells with a resistor 
and capacitor for each one to provide a filtered input to the uh, chip so it can monitor. And it then monitors the voltage across the cells as soon as any one of them reaches about 4.2, well, 4.25 volts. Uh, it shuts off the charging via this uh, pair of MOSFETs that are actually combined into one package. This uh, controls the charge and discharge. It's a very common way for this chip, type of chip to protect the circuitry. Um, so that uh, the microcontroller runs the current regulator until it charges, and I'm guessing this probably then signals back to the microcontroller that uh, that it's fully charged because it's doing the little blinky light thing to show this at a voltage level. Other things where they've note here: this is the MOSFET. It's the dual MOSFET package with two sources, two gates, and then all the drains are commoned, uh, and that's the one that's basically. Limiting the amount of current that can go in during charging, but also uh, when it's powering the USB port, and it does so with this circuitry here, it uh, will shut it off if it goes too low. The USB port can supply 2.3 amps before it cuts out, because I tested that. It has its own dedicated bit of circuitry that is, again, controlled by the microcontroller. It has an inductor. It has the... Um, buck chip which actually takes the full 12 volts in the battery pack and bucks it down to the 5 volt supply for the uh, the USB port that also supplies 5 volts for the LED if we go back to the other side of the circuit board again which is under here just looking about for all my paperwork here um, the, there's the LED there's the transistor that switches it they've used the same one that's used for the, um, the current regulator that basically a, a buck regular I suppose really for the charging and it has two 30 ohm resistors in parallel giving 15 ohms and that gives a current through the LED of about 130 milliamps it's quite a bright LED but it is being powered from the boosted 5 volt supply from the other side um what else is there so we've got the charge circuitry we've got the out 5 volt output this is nothing to do with the 12 volt output for the jump starting that's more or less it wow it takes so little time to describe it when you've uh, done all the reverse engineering. Let's take a look at the 12 volt option here. One of the reasons I bought this pack was I was looking at it as a very handy source of a brief use high current 12 volt output for running LED lighting and potentially uh, costumes, but note that the 12 volt output from the battery pack does not have any uh, shut off. If you over discharge it, you can literally just you can drain those cells down to the point of damage. So it's not suitable. You can't treat it as being a protected output uh, in this, the sense that it's going to cut off at when the first cell reaches a low voltage. In the case of the 5 volt power supply as soon as one of the cells reaches say about 2.5 volts it doesn't matter which cell as soon as one of them reaches it it'll cut it off that doesn't happen with this side so what we have here is three diodes on this side on the positive connection and three diodes on the other side all these six diodes in parallel and the point of them is to actually make sure that when you connect the jump leads onto a car battery and if the engine starts running and this is left connected it's not going to try pushing current back into the lithium battery stack because uh, that could potentially overcharge it and cause it to to explode basically so these diodes theoretically prevent that they're all they're a mishmash they do this a lot you'd think they'd all be perfectly matched but these have different text on them interesting um the switching of the negative, because this external module controls the whole side of the 12 volt. It's, I think they, the reason they have it separate is because it makes the unit smaller because you don't necessarily always need these floppy jump leads connected all the time. But it also controls what's happening so that the battery pack can't be damaged with overcurrent. If, say, for instance, these clips get short-circuited, I think it also monitors for voltage across the chips to make sure it's not being connected to a completely, absolutely flat battery, and that could also result in a high current flow. So we have the 12 volt supply come in. There is a little voltage regulator over here with a diode going to it from the positive rail, and that is powering this little microcontroller. The microcontroller is controlling the show. 
There is also another chip here. It's an LM358. That's a dual op amp. I'm wondering if this lead connection that comes from the negative here is not just powering the circuitry. I wonder if it's measuring the voltage across these MOSFETs. A common way of measuring uh, current is to measure the voltage across the MOSFETs. And if it gets too high, it knows that uh, the current is a very high level because the MOSFETs themselves, they never turn completely 100% on. Although they have got a very low on state resistance, there is always resistance across them. And it's just a common method of uh, measuring current uh, flow in a circuit, mainly just a threshold for protection against damage. So these MOSFETs are called HY4903B6, and they're rated about 300 amps each, and they're used apparently in applications like motor drives. They're standard N-channel MOSFETs. So when you connect this up, if the situation is correct, the microcontroller will switch these MOSFETs and it will allow current to flow through this circuit. I'm not sure if there is much in the way of, sort of linear current monitoring or if it's just purely extreme situations that it will shut down. But when it does, if it does shut down, uh, then it will start. It will sound the sounder for warnings um, just to make sure that, you know, that things are not going to plan. Uh, and that's it, really. There's not much else to say about this. It is just those protection diodes, the MOSFETs to switch the power to the output, a little button there for activating in the first place, and then just the microcontroller to manage the situation. So that's more or less it. I mean, it's a very straightforward looking pack. It looks fairly logical, um, fairly complex initially, but then it breaks down into those modules, the charge, uh, the control, the... Uh, USB output and then of course the 12 volt for that external module is coming straight from the battery pack. But that's it. It's interesting enough. Slightly disappointed that they stretched the truth a little bit with the capacity. I mean, technically speaking, there are three to 2,600 milliamp hour cells that does add up to 8,000 milliamp hour. But when you're talking about a 12 volt pack, that's not quite the same as the, uh, normally you'd say 12 volt at say 2600 milliamp hour total because that's what you're going to get from it as opposed to the 8000 milliamp hour that was described as but that's it what do you expect it's a it's not a super duper expensive pack and it's just a basic very classic functional jump starter